All right, so many of you have asked me, what are my opinions and thoughts on the F7 processor flight controllers that are starting to show up on the market? I actually have a brand new Omnibus F7 here with me right now. I will be doing some videos on this right after this, actually. And I have the Any FC F7 flight controller in the mail somewhere. It's going to be here soon. Before I jump into this, let's talk about the differences in the hardware and software. With the F1 and F3 boards, they're running at 72 megahertz, though the F3 boards do run faster because they can handle the floating point math and algorithms better than the F1 processors, processors can. The F4 boards are running at 168 megahertz, and the F7 boards are running at 216 megahertz. The F1 boards have two UARTs, the F3 boards have three UARTs, F4 boards most of them have three UARTs, though they are capable of having more. It depends on how many pins they add in for it when they manufacture it and tie that into the processor because I have seen more flight controllers with more UARTs. And then the F7 processors can, once again, theoretically have eight UARTs, though it does come down to the manufacturer and how many pins they decide to add in to the processor. The F3 boards have signal inverters on all three UARTs, uh, which is great for, say, you FreeSky users, because with the FreeSky receivers, the uh, SBUS and telemetry signals are already inverted, so you have to invert those signals again to uninvert it. Uh, so, and, and for that reason, I mean, you may have gone into the CLI and seen where you can invert or not invert the SBUS and telemetry signals. Uh, that's why. You can do it through the software. With the F4 processors, you can't invert it through software. You have to do it through hardware. And every single F4 board I've used so far, they only have one hardware inverter. And that's because the hardware inverter is a physical chip on the board, and that takes up space. I mean, there's some flight controllers that are just completely jam-packed with things like the DYS F4. I mean, there is not a single space to add in even one more hardware inverter. And it's not just that one. Like I said, it's all F4 boards I've used so far. Um, what this means is, if you are wanting to use a FreeSky receiver, you can use SBUS on that one UART that does have that inverter, but for your telemetry, you will ha actually have to physically tap into the uninverted signal of the receiver and then wire that to the flight controller to get telemetry to work. With the F7 processors, thankfully, you can inverse these signals through software once again just like the F3 processors uh, which is great because I mean they are still using the same I believe it's the 32 millimeter by 32 millimeter layout of the board and because the processor is even larger there's even less space so eight hardware inverters just it's not gonna happen so thankfully we can do it through software uh, making the eight UARTs available and useful but once again, it comes down to the actual board itself. With the Omnibus F7, it only has three UARTs because they've only added in pins for three UARTs. I mean, technically, if you're good enough, you could write your own firmware, and you would also have to be really good at soldering and solder wires directly to the pins of the processor to tap into all eight UARTs if you so choose, um, though I don't see many people doing that. I mean, I could, but I'm not willing to. Instead, um, say like the any FC F7 flight controller, you do have a, all eight UARTs available to you because instead of using a lot of pins, they use a lot of JST connectors, which are smaller, they take up less space, so they've tapped into more pins of the processor, which I believe the F7 processors have a total of 64 pins. The Omnibus also uh, only has eight motor outputs, where the any FC F7 has eight motor outputs. So I could see the Omnibus F7 being great for uh, those of you that are just wanting to freestyle or race because, I mean, really, I only need one UART, and that's for my iBus receiver with my Turn G Evolution transmitter. Uh, I, I use boards that have the built in on screen display, so I don't need a UART for that. The OSD is directly tied into the processor, so it's not using a UART. Uh, you know, we've got either the SD card readers or the data flash chip, so I don't need a, another UART for an external data logger. So yeah, just one UART and four motors, so this would be great for that. 
uh, I purchased the Annie FCF7 specifically for my large GPS build because it does have eight motor outputs and eight UARTs. So the reason I bring this up is uh, just just keep that in mind. If you are planning on going with F7 board, make sure you pick out a board for your application. Because I've even shown you before on the uh, DYS F4, even though it does use a F4 processor, which is larger than F3, it does have more pins, one complete side of the pins are not being used. They're not tied into anything. And you, it's actually a common thing. If you actually look at the traces on a lot of flight controllers, there are many pins that are just not being used. And that's definitely the case in the Omnibus F7 because they've added in the on-screen display, the voltage regulator, the barometer, and a bunch of other stuff, the SD card reader. So many of these pins aren't being used. Now what about speed? Because I mean, I talked about megahertz, but what does that mean? Can the F7 boards do 32K, 32K? Uh, technically, yes, absolutely, because the F4 processors can handle 32K, 32K, but there's a catch. It comes down to the gyro. Most flight controllers, at least the Betaflight flight controllers, use the MPU6000 gyro. And the reason for this is because the MPU6000, it, it handles vibrations extremely well. Because, I mean, how many of us, before the whole soft mounting motors and flight controller craze happened, how many of us were flying with no soft mounts whatsoever? All of us. And that's because the MPU6000 isn't susceptible, susceptible, however you say it, to vibrations. The bad part is the MPU6000 is limited to 8K. So even with these F4 boards, because the processor can run 32K, they can't run 32K because they're limited by the gyro. So you have to run 8K, 8K with these boards, assuming it has the MPU6000. Now, if they were to make an F4 board with, say, uh, the uh, 20602 gyro, like the Race Flight Revolt and the RF1 GUI, then yeah, you could run 32K, 32K. But most of the Betaflight boards aren't doing that because Betaflight doesn't even, I mean, technically it supports 32K, but it's, it's not finished yet. But the downside to the uh, 20602 gyro is it is extremely uh, affected by vibrations. That's why you have to, like it's, it's not advised, it's, it's mandatory. You have to soft mount your motors, your flagging shore, you have to soft mount your soft mounts, you have to put electrical tape in between, and then stick your entire multi-rotor inside of a pillowcase because the vibrations are so bad with that board. Uh, I mean, you have to increase the filters so much if you are getting vibrations, and the more filtering you add in, the more performance you're taking away, making 32K, 32K completely useless, so you might as well just be using a Betaflight board at 8K, 8K. So until the day comes when they make a, a gyro that can handle vibrations as well as the MPU6000, but can run 32K like the 20602, and put the two together, that, that's going to be a great day, but that day is not today. It hasn't happened yet. What's interesting, though, is, say, like the Omnibus F7, it actually has two gyros, and you don't use both at the same time. I mean, that, that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, one of the gyros is the MPU6000. The other gyro is the 20608, which can handle 32K, and you can actually pick and choose which one you want to use through the CLI. Now this is still in, you know, the, the firmware for this board, they don't have Betaflight 3.1.7 firmware for it. Uh, this comes with Betaflight 3.2 firmware already on it, but it's not finished. Like I showed you, they're still in the nightly builds and beta testing, so just be aware if you do buy this flag controller at the time of you're recording this, uh, you might have some problems with it because there will be some bugs and problems with the firmware. I'm going to give it a try a couple of videos from now and we'll see what happens. But the point I'm trying to make is what's interesting is very soon you can run 32K, 32K with Betaflight. So I'm interested to see how many guys switch from race flight back to Betaflight because their train of thought is probably going to be like mine. Well, now I can have my cake and eat it too because with race flight, you don't you really don't get that many features. I mean, hell, they still don't have on-screen displays working. You, you can't, you know, send the data and receive the data to get that OSD to work. 
So my train of thought, if I were a believer in 32K, I'd be like, oh, well, I'm going back to beta flight because now I can have 32K and a frickin' on-screen display. <laughs> I mean, hell, the, the OSD is even built into the Omnibus F7, so there's nothing to worry about. 32K and built-in OSD, where the race flight, the Revolt, has no OSD, no voltage regulator, no barometer, no nothing. Hell, it doesn't even have an SD card reader. So yeah, like I said, you can have your cake and eat it too now. Now what about D-Shot 1200? Because I did do a video on that recently. Um, and like I said, uh, D-Shot 1200 is, is still very new, still in the you know beta testing and all that. It's going to be finished once they finish Beta Flight 3.2 firmware, which like I said, many times before, it's still in the testing. Uh, though you can use D-Shot 1200 as of right now. I mean, it's, it's available. You can use it. It might, you know, there might be bugs in the firmware, but you can use it. Anyway, my, my answer is uh, that has nothing to do with the processor. DSHOT 1200 is going to be the just the protocol for the ESCs, and that relies more on the hardware of the ESCs, not the flight controller. So you can use DSHOT 1200 with a F4 processor flight controller. And that is assuming, and this is something you guys need to keep in mind, uh, assuming these whatever board you're using can use D shot period because I mean there's I'm not gonna get into it but with with the DMA I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible not not all pins can support D shot say like the the any FC F7 board it does have eight motor outputs but D shot only works on four of them I would assume that D-Shot does work on the four motor outputs of the Omnibus F7, though I don't want to say it does because I haven't used it yet, but I'm pretty sure it will work. So that's going to do it, guys. I don't want to keep this video going on, um, but that's just my overall thoughts as of right now. I'm sure in the future, now we, we have this uh, you know, advancement in hardware and software, we can see some even newer and better features coming along. I can only imagine what, but... I am pretty excited for it, but uh, as of right now, I I mean, if you want to future-proof your multi-rotor, then yeah, you can go ahead and get an F7 board, uh, but I, I wouldn't be too concerned with it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.